So here we have the first beer through the beer engine, which you've seen me refurbishing and setting up in a couple of previous videos. This beer, which is the first one I brewed to put through it, is a Sussex bitter based on Harvey's best bitter and basically my version of a recipe from the Malt Miller website, which I'll put a link to in the bottom. Uh, and also my sort of brew father recipe link as well, because it's a, uh, there's a few minor changes that I'll talk about in a minute, but I think you'll agree that looks rather splendid. Cheers. <laughs> So I'll just quickly run through the recipe for this and uh, do a little bit of brew footage and then we'll do a tasting and have a chat about the finished product. So this beer was brewed based on the recipe off the Malt Miller website for Sussex Bitter. I did make a couple of tweaks to it just based on the ingredients that I had uh, and a few other things. So this is what I did. It was a 20 litre batch and I used 4.1, sorry, 3.1 kilos of Warminster Pale Ale Malt. We had 170 grams of maize in there, so uh, quite a sort of traditional addition there for English bitters, just to add a little bit of, I guess, uh, dryness and lighten the body up a little bit. Uh, bit of crystal 220, 130 grams of that, and 130 grams of crystal 110. I believe in the Malt Miller recipe, it was all dark crystal, but I think for my one, for some reason, I decided that I'd uh, mix two different types of crystal malts together. Uh, that's it for the grain bills, so pretty straightforward. And then in the hops, we have 28 grams of Fuggles at 60 minutes, 23 grams of Bramling Cross at 20, and then 13 grams each of EKG and Fuggles at Flame Out. I think I left it for um, 10 or 15 minutes or something uh, to steep and then basically chilled it down. So there wasn't a specific amount of time or temperature for the flame out addition. So I just went with that option myself. That gives us about 35 IBUs, a OG of about 1040, which should theoretically come down to about 1011, uh, mashing at 68, leaving us with roughly a 3.8% ABV beer, according to the recipe anyway. So um, yeah, kind of a classic sort of uh, English bitter recipe there. So one bit that needs mentioning here is the yeast. So I did manage to actually use some Sussex yeast in this one because I had a slant from Brew Labs, which I acquired, I think, possibly back at one of the BrewCon events when they had a stall there. Uh, it's not one that's available widely. I don't think it's there's an equivalent to that from any of the main sort of suppliers that you would normally look at, like Y Yeast and White Labs, Imperial, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, Brew Labs do have it on a slant. And although I don't think they were giving us the exact origin of it at the time, it was pretty clear to me anyway that it was probably the Harvey's strain, that being the sort of most well-known kind of Sussex brewery that there is. Um, now, that will obviously be quite important if you're aiming to get a sort of authentic uh, clone or tribute beer. I said before, I don't really like using the term clone because I don't think it's really possible to, to clone a beer properly. Um, because of all the variables and everything like that, but you can certainly you know, make a tribute to it anyway. But yeah, if you're aiming to get it as close as possible, obviously yeast is always really important. In this case, one thing about the Harvey's Brewery that you probably won't be able to replicate is the kind of natural bacteria that's in the brew house. I've heard from various sources that there are sort of bugs within the brewery, which uh, in addition to the house yeast strain, create the very uh, distinct sort of flavor from the uh, Harvey's beers so how true that is or not I'm not sure but I believe they do open fermentation everything there and the yeah kind of house uh, bugs or bacteria as you will will contribute to the, the flavor as well so yeah the yeast is going to help it obviously is not going to contribute those um, elements because it's an isolated strain anyway obviously you can use other options if you wanted to but I think based on how this beer has come out uh, any kind of fairly dry, attenuative English strain with a bit of fruity character would do the job. So, uh, you know, the easy option would be something like SO4, I guess, in that case. 
Anyway, let's do a little bit of brew footage and then we'll do a bit of a tasting for this beer. So my numbers on the brew day didn't quite come out as per the recipe. I ended up with a slightly higher OG because uh, I forgot that the warm instant malt always gives me a better extract efficiency than I would normally get with other malts. So that bumped up the, the OG a little bit and the yeast, I think, fermented down slightly more than expected as well. So it ended up about four and a half percent. Once again, an attempt to brew a sub four percent beer has flopped. Uh, completely, they always end up about four and a half or five percent for me whenever I try and brew anything um, under four percent, it seems, but uh, worse things have happened. So, aside from that, it all pretty much went to plan, and this is what we've got at the end of it. So, you can see the uh, appearance wise, the cap on top of there has kind of dropped away a bit, but it is still holding a nice little bit of foam on the top, obviously, for such a low carbonated beer you're probably not gonna you know, keep the head around um, for too long, uh, especially when it's served off of the hand pull. Uh, the color is a light sort of honey amber, quite a nice color to it. I think based on pictures of the original and obviously the fact that I did use uh, a portion of the caramel malt that was a bit lighter, the color is a bit lighter than this on uh, comparison to the genuine sort of Harvey's Bitter, um, but it still looks like a really nice sort of light amber uh, kind of golden bitter type color to me which is nice clarity is pretty good um, it's slightly more difficult to tell with a dimpled pint glass like this but you can just about see through to the other side it's not perfectly clear um, i am finding that the hand pull does rouse quite a bit of sediment from the keg when you're using it so i haven't modified the keg at the moment to use the floating dip tube or shorten the uh, the tube or anything like that. So hopefully once I've done that, that might stop um, the sediment kind of getting pushed up by the action of the, the pump itself. Anyway, let's get back to the beer. So um, yeah, looks nice. And on the aroma, quite a bit of hop on the aroma. So it's got that classic English hop sort of grassy hedgerow a little bit of maybe some berry fruit in there. There's a touch of sweet caramel on the nose as well from the malts, which is very nice. So those are playing together quite well. But yeah, it smells like a kind of classic summer ale to me, which is um, quite appealing, I must say. And then flavor wise, it's very light, quite dry finish to it. There's a good punch of bitterness up front on this, so it does have a fairly high um, sort of bugu ratio bitterness to gravity. 
ratio and yeah there's a, a decent sort of upfront bitterness on there it's not um, harsh though it's very smooth which is good you get that sort of soft caramel flavor from the malts um, a little bit of sweetness very very easy drinking I think especially with the low carbonation off of the beer engine um, you could just sling these back easy no problem at all And then the hops, a little bit of grassiness. Again, I always use the term hedgerow when I'm talking about English hops, but it's just got this sort of, yeah, kind of grassy hedgerow fruit, floral thing, maybe a little bit of hay in there as well. It's, um, yeah, the sort of things that I would associate with hops like EKG and Fuggles. Um, the Bramlings in there as well, which can sometimes give you a bit of the berry fruit flavours. But yeah, quite quite a sort of um, hoppy in the English ale sense. So it's not, you know, blow your head off IPA hoppy, but it's quite a hoppy um, English bitter in terms of flavour. Definitely more, more hop forward than some other beers in this sort of style. A decent level of bitterness to it. Quite dry, very easy drinking. I would say it's definitely a good representation of what some people would describe as a a kind of southern style bitter as opposed to a uh, like a Yorkshire bitter or something like that or um, other beers from the north of England or the Midlands um, in the sense that yeah it's more more sort of hot forward and a little bit drier maybe a little bit less of the kind of chewy uh, malt flavours um, a bit lighter body than you might get with um, some beers like that um, certainly some of the beers that I've brewed on this channel before uh, in terms of bitters would probably fit more into the um, I guess Yorkshire bitter or, or Northern style bitter category. Whereas this, I think, yeah, is, uh, not surprisingly being based on a Sussex bitter, a good representation of um, maybe those slightly more lighter, uh, refreshing, summery styled English ales you might get from those breweries. Um, although obviously there's similar beers brewed all over the place, but you do have people talk about that sort of distinction between the, um, the different areas of the UK in terms of beer style. Anyway, it's very nice. I'm enjoying this a lot. Um, definitely a recipe that I would recommend having a go at. And um, yeah, this cake's not going to last long because, as I said, you can throw these back very quickly. And uh, if the sun actually comes out, this would uh, definitely lead to a bit of a sesh on these ones. So cheers, guys. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know, uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing.